Guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm up at the mountain fishing farm right now, but I've got the mountain fishing pack ready to roll and we are heading up to a brand new mountain lake to hopefully catch some trout. But first things first, let's go ahead and just throw the pack into the truck. We gotta get some pallets out of the back of the truck here as well. Oh, got some worms right down here. I had them in the fridge. They're still nice and cool, but it's hot in the car. We gotta make sure that they don't get too toasty. We got a hay bale in the back that we gotta bring down to the goats and then we're heading up into the mountains. Man, crank up the AC a little bit. It's a hot day uh, today, but nothing compared uh, to the last week. It has been consistently over 100 degrees, uh, hot enough to where I didn't want to leave uh, the animals here unattended while I'm out fishing, uh, at least not until they're more properly set up. So right now when it's hot out, I'm just kind of sticking around the farm. Or we just got to go down to the shop real quick to unload those pallets and uh, get our fishing poles. Oh man, there's like some big weeds <laughs> growing down here at the shop. Oh, I haven't even noticed that. Yep, that is definitely my pallet hoarding stash. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm only keeping the really good ones. Not just taking every every old pallet. Don't when you see a good pallet, you just sometimes can't say no. There we go. Since my Dogecoin didn't go to the moon, maybe our pallet stack can. All right, let's see what we got in here. Oh man. It's a mess, guys. <laughs> I'm always working on something, what can I say? Uh, I just built some things for the goats. I'll probably show you in another video what I'm doing there. But we have uh, three rods right here. We got our slip float rod that we're definitely not gonna leave. We got our bullet lure all rigged up and ready to roll. And of course, we'll bring out the fly pole too because, uh, man, this is, I've been like really trying hard to learn fly fishing and I'm starting to get better. So I'm kind of always bringing one along now. All right, we'll clean up the shop another time. <laughs> Oh, the goats are calling for us. Man, guys, I'm so excited to get up uh, to this lake here. It's a really promising looking one. And uh, I've just been waiting for this weather window to finally go up there and check it out. So there's supposed to be trout in there, but we'll just find out. All right, let's get them a little bit of hay to munch on while uh, we're gone. Uh, when I'm here, I have them out in the big pasture here, but while I'm gone, I just can't risk uh, them busting out or getting into something. Also, there's a lot of predators here, mountain lions, wolves, coyotes, bears, all of them would love to make a snack out of a goat. So they're in their secure pen uh, at night and whenever I'm gone. Hi. <laughs> Hello, I know. I know, my goodness, hello. Hi. Oh, it's a baby boy. Hi. Hi, hello, who are you? I have a confession to make. Um, yeah, there's more goats. There's more goats. I don't know what it is uh, with goats and chickens, but the math adds up the same. We started out with two plus two goats, which should equal four, but somehow there's nine here, and I don't know how it happened. Oh. Hi, little baby. Little baby goat, hello. This is her mama right here, and then the other baby is hanging out right there. Right after shooting the last uh, video, I went out and adopted five more that needed a good home. Uh, so we have a mama with two babies and uh, two sisters. Watch out, big girl, watch out, I'm coming in. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, this mama goat, uh, is gonna give our friendly baby boy a tough rivalry for most adorable, nicest goat uh, in the herd. Don't worry, baby boy, you're still my favorite. But this big girl here is what they call a bottle baby. She was raised uh, hand-fed with a milk bottle. 
uh, because her mom couldn't uh, give her milk. So she absolutely loves people. She'll be calling for me all day long until I come down here. <laughs> One could almost call that a little bit needy, huh, big girl? Now it took the two herds a little bit of time uh, to get used to each other, but uh, within probably about two or three days, uh, they all became absolute best friends. We're gonna give them that hay in just a second. But I gotta show you guys this list right here. This is the list of uh, names that you guys gave me in the, oh no, no, don't eat the list. Don't eat the list. These guys made this list for you guys. Those are your guys' names. Unbelievable. So you guys left amazing names in the comments of the last video for the original four goats. But there are so many good names that I even have two more uh, for the two baby girls uh, right here. They're gonna be named as well. No, I'm keeping it. Uh -uh. Mm, Marlar. All right, so this little girl right here, she's the only all brown goat uh, that we have. These ones here are more multicolored. So it's, oh my goodness, did you guys just see that? <laughs> but uh, it is only appropriate that she gets the name Brownie, our little brown trout. She's smiling right there. She's still really shy. Uh, her big sister, she's actually warmed up quite a bit. She was the shyest of them all, but she started really enjoying these head rubs right there. And then she likes her little neck rubs. And look at these little little wobbles right there. These here are because she is a Swiss Toggenberg goat. And because she's a Swiss goat, one of you guys said to name one of the goats Heidi. And I thought Heidi is a beautiful name. So your name is Heidi. Hi, Brownie. Hi, Heidi. Nice to meet you guys. I'm Life. I know, I know. You'll get your name in the next video. I don't have names for all of the goats here, so I'm gonna need your guys' help in the comment section below to help name the outstanding goats. But we still got a couple more here. What is it with you in this list? No, 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 no. All right, the boys, I absolutely loved these names that you guys had. A lot of you guys upvoted uh, these names too, and I, <laughs> it's so appropriate. Uh, that's the two baby boys right here. So I gotta make sure they don't eat uh, this list as well. <laughs> Goat overload. This boy right here, our friendly boy, this is Bobber, Bobby. Bobby the Bobber. <laughs> I love that name so much. And this little boy right here, the little tiny guy, that's Bullet. Then we have two names left, and you know what? They are going to be for the two baby goats. This one right here, she's got beautiful blue eyes, she's got brown, she's got white, she's got a little bit of black. She's got all the colors of the rainbow, so her name, is gonna be Rainbow. And then her sister, who's a little more shy, haven't gotten to know the sister that much yet, so her name is gonna be Brookie. <laughs> All right, so these three right here, uh, they still need names. One uh, for our mama goat, and then a name each for the sisters. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, they're so cute, they do these funny little jump things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are so adorable. Ooh, sharp. All right, you guys, here we go. There's the good stuff. We're gonna kind of separate it out a little bit. Just cause uh, the mama goat, uh, she's definitely the dominant one. And uh, if I throw everything in one pile, she kind of guards uh, the, the, all the food as hers. And I want to make sure that the others can get in there as well. We'll do a third pile for the sisters. Uh, so they can get to some too. I'm gonna throw this over onto the stanchion I built. Nice throw. My goodness, look at all the bees. Look at them, they're all drinking the slowly leaking uh, water right here. Hi, you guys. Hello. Hi. I wanna pet them. Look how friendly they are. Hi, buddy. Oh, look, there's one right here. Hi, little buddy. Hi. Hi, my name's Life. Huh? <laughs> oh, that's just so cool. Goats fed. Chickens have food, water, goats have water. Unloaded the pallets. We got our fishing poles. We're going fishing. the mountains look how beautiful 
it is out here. We're kind of in this burnt out forest, but it's filled with wildflowers. All right, we're getting really close to the lake. Oh, look at that, there's like a tiny little alpine pond. Oh my goodness, there's cows here. <laughs> there's cows in the middle of the road. What are they doing? Where did you guys come from? Look, they're, they're young baby cows. I... Come on, let's, let's go away from the road. <laughs> All right, get out of here, you guys. Get out of here. Man, look at them up there. They're like happy mountain cows. I wonder if there's more cows out here. Oh, oh, more cows, it's the parents. Oh my goodness, hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm having the stare off with the cow on the road. Doesn't seem to want to budge. All right, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go, nice and easy. There we go. There we go, okay, okay. I know, I know. Man, I tell you what, if I were a cow, that is the cow I would want to be right there. Oh, it's beautiful. Now the only thing with this lake is it seems really shallow. Like there's a lot of reeds and stuff growing uh, near the shore, so we gotta try and find a spot with kind of a steeper bank. Uh, that we've got deep water within casting distance because I don't have the kayak or anything with me and uh, we're gonna have to catch anything uh, from shore. Oh, I saw movement, but it's a, it's a, it's a duck. Whew. All right, all right. All right, right here is kind of a spot where we can pull over, there we go. I did just pick up some uh, fresh flies uh, from the store. A couple more of these Thin Mints that have been doing really, really good for me. And then, I don't even know what this is, but I had to buy it. It looked really good. And then these little things, I don't know why, but for some reason, uh, those looked really good too. All right, so what we're just gonna do is a uh, hike in just a little bit. There's a bit of a peninsula uh, out there on the lake where I think we might be able to get out to some deeper water. Uh, overall, the lake is a lot shallower than I was expecting. Uh, a lot of these places I just find using Google Earth. I know a lot of you guys are always curious uh, how I find these mountain lakes. I just look at like Google Earth and then cross-reference that with the fishing regulations uh, to see what looks good and then what's actually legal to fish. All right. There we are. Look at this. See this right here? Just like most of the forests out here, the trees uh, are burnt. A fire came through and uh, some of the trees didn't survive it, but it looks like most of them made it. Beautiful out here. Man, this is what I was talking about with the uh, shoreline. It's just covered in those reeds. Let's try and find a place where we can get down uh, closer to the water. It was a duck, I thought a giant fish just splashed there. And also I just saw a giant dragonfly. Oh, it got away. Could maybe use the dragonfly as bait. He's right there, he's right there, he's a giant. I see him right, oh no, a wasp just messed with him. A wasp jumped on him and it spooked him off. Hmm, 
There's a nice big sunken tree right there in front of us. That might be a spot that the fish like to hide out. All right, as you guys can see, there's a lot of reeds uh, there. Those are those just grassy things growing there in the, the water near shore. Uh, so we really need to make sure that we don't get stuck in those, but I'm seeing them pretty much covering the entire shoreline. What we're just gonna do is give it a shot with uh, the bullet lure first, a couple of casts and see what happens down there. Ah, ah, so many prickly bushes down here. All right, first cast with the bullet lure. We're in the reeds. Oh, oh no. And it's the last bullet lure that I have too. I need to make some new ones so I can't afford to, to lose that one right now. All right, let's go ahead and try that again. Cast straight out and uh, avoid the reeds coming in this time. There's kind of this hole I'm gonna try and get my line to go into. There we go. Oh man. <laughs> From one snag to the next. Here, this is this reed stuff right here. It's like a tubular grass. It's actually pretty cool. It's like six, seven feet tall all over the place. But man, we're getting stuck every time I'm casting here now. All right, decent cast, decent cast. That one got a little further out there. Ooh, I just saw a shadow. It, oh, it looked like a trout, but it might've just been a wave. And yeet, oh wow, almost got hit. By the bullet lure, I almost got bulleted. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't want to risk like dragging it through the reeds, so I thought I'd whip it towards us. Very good chance that that shadow was just, just my eyes playing tricks on me. But there's also a chance it could be a big hungry trout just looking for a little meal to swim by. Oh no, we're stuck on a reed out there. Oh no! Oh, the leader broke. There goes our last bullet lure. Man, that was like on the fifth cast too. Just started. All right, you know what? We're gonna move on. This spot is cursed. It's a cursed fishing uh, fishing spot. So we're just gonna see if we can't find uh, another one without all oh, those reeds right there, man. There's gotta be just a spot that's a little bit more accessible. Rest in peace, old friend. Let's see what the other side looks like over here. Oh, I scared a duck. Man, we should have come right over here. This side here looks way better. We can actually get straight down uh, to the water. Oh man, I'm gonna miss that bull lure over here. <sighs> That's all right. Well, we can maybe give the fly a try too. Plus we got the bobber, so hmm. Man, if we can catch a dragonfly or a larva, that might be pretty fire to send that bobber out there. Yeah, why don't we do that? Let's see if we can, oh wait, no, we have worms. We can send a worm out right now. What? It's been a while since I've brought worms into the mountains, so I didn't even think about it. Ooh, yes, ooh, juicy one. This guy right here was a volunteer. I think he wanted to uh, be in this YouTube video. We're just gonna slide them all the way up that hook. Don't need to poke them a whole bunch of times. Just go in once, slide them through until he comes up off the hook the other end. Then come out with the hook again. Slide the worm over the eye of the hook. There you go. There you go. Not all the way out, but far enough. Can I see a bobber just floating right there? I think he looks pretty happy right in that spot. Okay, we're just gonna set our pole right there. Now we just gotta keep an eye on that bobber and if it goes down, that means a fish is biting. All right, now on the fly pole, I've just got this little tiny, it's like a little dry fly. 
that I have on there. Uh, we should probably switch over to like one of those larger thin mints, uh, like a bigger woolly bugger or something that we can cast out a little further and twitch through the water. But why don't we just give the dry fly a couple of shots Not a bad spot. Yeah, let's give this a try. Ah, okay. Not a good start so far. <laughs> Lost the bullet lure and the fly, geez. So what we're gonna do is just pull out one of these uh, little Thin Mint flies. Probably a good idea whenever you guys are out fishing, if it's been a while and uh, your leaders have been on your rods for a long time, best to probably just cut them off and start new before you start fishing because that's probably what happened with the bullet lure too, uh, is that it was just kind of, had gotten a little old, the line might have gotten rotten. So far no action down there on the bobber. Oh, the bobber disappeared. Where's the bobber? Oh, oh, no, it just drifted. It drifted, false alarm. Everyone calm down. I would have expected something to play with the bobber by now. All right, there we go. We got our fly pole all set up again. Man, the water's so clear. I can see everything in there. That's awesome. If a trout did come to bite, we would see it before it bites. I can watch that fly sinking right now. Right as it's about to hit the bottom, I could give it a couple of strips and we kind of swim it along the bottom like it's a little, little fish or a leech or something. Or you can just recast them. Yo, if you guys are still newer to fly fishing, kind of like I am, one thing I learned uh, is that fishing with like a sinking woolly bugger, like a weighted woolly bugger, a heavier fly, makes it a lot easier. One thing I have uh, trouble with is with the super light flies, uh, is that they just kind of do whatever they want in the wind out there versus you can control uh, these heavier flies a lot better. And usually as it's sinking in the water, that's kind of what I've noticed the trout just cannot resist is a slowly sinking kind of bug looking thing in the water. It's their absolute favorite. Bobber has drifted way over here. Hmm, man, no bites. It's already been about an hour and a half since we've been fishing here. And uh, no bites yet. Let me see if I can find uh, some other type of bait down in the water. Let's see what we got down here. In the water, I'm sure that we might find something else. Ooh, there's a tiny one. An itty bitty one of exactly what we're looking for. Check that little guy out. That's a... Uh, a dragonfly larva. Ooh, ooh, look at him. He's super happy looking. He's so cute. All right, you can get back in the water. We want a bigger one of those. Or if you guys are just flipping over rocks or uh, branches and stuff, just put them right back where you found them. Uh, because sometimes like animals, like frogs and little salamanders, they lay their eggs on there. So if you just leave them up on shore, the eggs would dry up. That'd be a shame. Over here, there's a couple more branches down in the water. Right here, you can see lots of eggs, those are eggs right there, all along this branch. So we're just gonna make sure that we submerge it all the way again, so that those eggs stay nice and moist. Not sure yet if there's fish in this lake, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Oh, what was that? Oh, jeez. Wow, startled me, it was some weird little bird. All right, there's zero casting uh, space behind us. So we're just gonna have to do what's called a roll cast. What we want is a bit of a belly in the line like that. There we go. And that way you kind of roll it out like it's like a wheel. 
So bring it back, roll forward. And I'm still practicing this one, by the way. There you go, there you go, a little better, a little better. That fly got out there a bit further. This lake is absolutely gorgeous, but what I think uh, might be going on is uh, that there could have been a winter die-off of trout in here. And it's something I just learned about this year. Basically what we had in this area was a very cold winter and it came early. So what that means is that the lakes froze over very early in the season when there was still a lot of biomass and things from the summer that were still decaying underwater. And what happens during that decaying process is that it uses up a lot of the oxygen. And when there's no more oxygen in the lake, then it kills off all the fish. Uh, and I did read about this lake here that it is something that can happen. Now what we're gonna do is just go over to another lake that's very close by. We have been there before together. Uh, probably a couple of months ago, we were there and it's where those giant dead brook trout were just in the water and a similar thing happened there. But at that lake, I did see fish surfacing. I just couldn't get them to bite. It was still early. There was ice out in some spots of the lake. So now that it's summer, maybe the bite will be on because it sure ain't over here. Well, you guys, we are back at the Mystery Mountain Lake. It is beautiful, and there was a trout that just surfaced right there. 100% fish. Um, okay, that's awesome. All right, we're gonna send the bobber uh, out there first thing. Uh, just get some bait on there. We should have come here earlier, guys. Uh, it's just, I, yeah, there's something that's fun about uh, exploring new uh, places, places we've never been to before. I wonder if I can find a dragonfly larva down there real quick. Got one, giant one. First log that I flipped over and uh, got this monster, monster dragonfly larva. Ooh, he's a fast one. Look at that. Look at that. That's a big, juicy dragonfly larva. All right, all right. There's fish surfacing everywhere. We have a dragonfly larva, and we've got the bobber. Ah, oh, with the larva on it. My goodness. I, I am excited. <laughs> I didn't know what to say there exactly, but uh, this little guy is just kind of dangling there like that, and he'll be kind of wiggling around under that bobber. Let's go ahead and cast this guy out and uh, then we'll grab our fly pole. Just want to get him out there while those trout are still uh, actively feeding right here. Oh, perfect. Put the bobber rod right there in that bush. Man, it's gorgeous up here, not a breeze at all, it is just totally calm. The sun is in the process of setting. She's not down yet, it's just, 
it's kind of hidden behind uh, the mountain there. Fly, artificial fly versus dragonfly. Who wins? Oh! Oh, I just felt a bite. No way. If we get one on the fly before the dragonfly, that would just be insane. There you go. Perfect. We got that tree that we can uh, go out on to cast from. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Let's get the dragonfly larva out first. Yeah, very, very gently walk here. I do not want to disturb the water too much. I can see ripples in the water just from me stepping on the tree here, so the trout for sure can feel that. There we go. really hard to get. Oh, there's a trout right by the bobber. Right by the bobber. Ooh, bobber's moving. The bobber just moved. It could be that that's the dragonfly larva also swimming around underneath there trying to like get away from a trout if it's being circled or something. <laughs> I can hear the fly knocking into the trees behind us here. Way too many obstacles for this. Oh, there, there's a trout right there. Right there. Between the, uh, no way. Oh, there he is. There he is. I see him. I can see him. There's a small trout just kind of circling. Oh, Oh, definitely a little one right there. Maybe this big or something. Oh, 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 he just came up and looked at it. Just came up to look at it. Oh, I lost the, f what? Oh, I lost the fly somehow. I don't know how, but oh, a monster just surfaced right there. Oh, bobber's down, bobber down, bobber down, bobber down, bobber down. Oh, it's still down, still down. There we go, fish on, baby. Fish on. Oh, oh, good fighter, good fighter. There he is. Oh, don't go under the dog. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what is that? What? 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 No. Oh, he came off. He came off. It was a bass. It was... It, what? It was a smallmouth bass. Now, that was the first time I've caught a smallie on a dragonfly larva. So that's probably what was right here at shore chasing around the fly. Maybe we can catch a smallie on the fly. They taste pretty good, just in case you were wondering. I know a lot of people don't eat bass, but uh, they're actually very, very tasty. I haven't done so in several years. Right, that means we need a new dragonfly larva though. Oh, check this out. This is a uh, dragonfly larva, like exoskeleton. When the dragonflies lay their eggs in the water, uh, they hatch and turn into these little dragonfly larvae. Of course, they keep growing and growing, and they're actually really, really voracious predators. There's a dragonfly right there. That's the adult form of uh, this right over here. And when they reach uh, their mature size, then they crawl up and usually will latch on uh, to little things like this and they'll sit right here and then a dragonfly will hatch out of uh, this exoskeleton and it'll crawl up, chill for a little bit, and then it'll fly off. That's the life cycle of a dragonfly right there for you. I know you've always been wondering. All right, but they like to sit underneath logs like this. 
Oh, there's one crawling on me. Right, right here, right here. Perfect. It's like a twin of that last one. That is a perfect trout size right there. Man, I hope that's not all smallies jumping around here. That explains it. Just going to put that guy right on the hook. Ooh, lively one. Very lively. And we're going to try and send that baby out as far as possible. We're going to try and get away from all the bass. Because <laughs> the bass like being in the shallow water. And the trout should be out a little deeper. Oh, dang it. I lost him. I lost the dragonfly. Dang it. Ripped off the hook. I am finding tons of, look at that, lots of these dragonfly exoskeletons. Lots and lots of them, but not the uh, fresh ones. If I can't find any more of the dragonfly larva, then we're throwing a worm on there. A big, juicy one. And we're going to send that sucker way out there. We're going to go out as far as we can. While he sits out there, there's definitely something hunting there. And it very well could be a smallie. That'd be cool to catch a smallie on the fly. Kind of pulling that fly across the surface like it's some bug laying eggs in the water. Sure is beautiful. Man, you guys didn't catch any trout. Ah, what a bummer. I know they're out there, so I've got to come back, uh, make it out here earlier, and uh, maybe bring out the uh, kayak who got dark in the car. There we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll be back and uh, thank you for joining on this one here even though it wasn't a catch and cook But we went bass fishing bass two Episodes in a row we caught a bass with our hand at night in the last episode and one of the bobber Today that was awesome <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you guys uh, then very soon for the next fishing adventure I'll try and have her out uh, here in a few days or a week or so um, I'm just gonna just start getting out and doing uh, more fishing again now that the animals are uh, set up better and I can leave them alone for a day uh, versus having to check in on them, you know, five times a day. So anyways, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all very soon for the next fishing adventure. And until then, you all know it, fish on, baby.